In Premiere Pro, while the tools available for creating 3D animations are quite limited, this video will provide you with valuable tips and tricks for crafting an engaging 3D flight map animation. This video was requested by one of my viewers. If you have any video suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment. Alright, so I've already imported the world map onto my timeline. Next, let's go ahead and scale it down to fit. By the way, you can download all project-related assets from the video description. Stay tuned for the password, which will pop up halfway through the video. Now grab the rectangle tool and use it to create a straight line, since we're plotting a flight path from Canada to Australia. Head over to the Effect Controls panel and change the fill color of the line to whatever you like. Then rotate that line. I find a 23-degree angle works nicely, but you can tweak it as needed. To animate the line, first uncheck the Uniform Scale option. Then, click on the stopwatch icon next to Horizontal Scale to set the first keyframe. Take that keyframe few seconds forward in the timeline and set the scale value to zero. To smooth out the animation, right-click the first keyframe and select Ease Out. And for the last keyframe, choose Ease In. Next, bring in the Location Marker GIF image. Adjust its scale and position so that it matches the starting point of your line. If you want more precision, Zoom in on the previous screen. Now, hold down the outer option key and drag to duplicate the GIF image about six times. Move your playhead forward a few frames, then select all the duplicated images and duplicate them again. On the previous screen, scroll down to where your final destination is Australia in this case, and select one of your marker images. Adjust its position so it lines up properly. Now you can zoom out. Select the marker image you just adjusted, copy it, and then select all the duplicated images. Press Ctrl plus Alt plus V to paste the position attributes to all of them. Let's move the line layer's position now and extend its duration so it matches the duration of the map image. You can bring in an airplane image at this point, or use any other image you prefer. Next tweak the airplane scale, rotation, and position. I suggest leaving a small gap between the line and the plane. Add an opacity keyframe that starts at 0% and ends up at 100% before the line animation begins. Similarly, add a keyframe for the position. Move your playhead to the point where the line animation ends, then adjust the plane's position to match the line's endpoint. Move forward a few more frames and set a keyframe for the scale. A few frames later, scale it down to zero. To keep everything smooth, set the time interpolation to ease out for the first keyframe and ease in for the last one. It's looking pretty cool, but we can take it up a notch. Select all the layers and nest them together. Give the nest sequence any name you want. Move the playhead to a new point on the timeline and set a keyframe for both scale and position. A few frames before the line animation starts, increase the scale value and adjust the position for a zoom in effect. For a smoother animation, just repeat the same steps as before. With the nested layer selected, go to the effects panel and search for the offset effect. Double click it to apply, and also add the sphere eyes effect. Head back to the effect controls panel, and just after the zoom starts, under sphere eyes section set a keyframe for the radius. A few frames later, increase the radius value for a nice spherical 3D look. Now go back to the first keyframe of the radius, and under offset set a keyframe for the ship center to property. Move your playhead to the keyframe where your final radius keyframe is, and adjust the X and Y coordinates as you prefer. At this point, you might need to make some more adjustments to the scale and position to keep everything aligned. If you want to add a 3D rotation, move your playhead forward to where the line animation ends, and adjust the X and Y values of the offset effect. Remember, you can always move your keyframes around or tweak their values if the timing feels off. If needed, double-click on the nested layer to make more precise adjustments. Similarly for our nested layer, let's apply the levels effect. In the effect controls panel under levels, reduce the RGB white output value, then click the circle icon to create an ellipse mask and check inverted option. Set the mask feather to 180 and adjust the size and position of the mask. Click the stopwatch next to mask path and set a keyframe. Move the playhead to where the 3D rotation ends, then click on the mask to highlight and adjust its position. The lighting effect kicks in too early, so let's add keyframes for the mask's opacity. 
start at 0% and fade it into 100% for extra touch, add sound effects maybe a pop-up sound when location markers appears, and add zoom in in a helicopter sound effect based on our animation. If you're not satisfied with the result, no worries, you can always switch it up, let's try another approach. Use the ellipse tool to draw a circle. Notice, password is flick flight. Select the nested layer, and from effects panel add the track matte key effect. In the effect controls panel, set the matte to video too, since that's where our shape layer is. Extend the video to layer to match the duration of the nested layer. You'll also need to add a keyframe for the offset coordinates and adjust the previous ones to match. You can repeat these steps for the lighting effect too. Finally, let's add a particle overlay on top. To remove the black background, set its blend mode to screen. I think it's best to start it from this frame, so trim it if necessary. I've changed my mind about this lighting effect. Let's delete the ellipse mask and reduce the RGB white output value. Then zoom out of the preview monitor and click on the pen icon to create a free bezier mask instead. Now you can click outside the mask to set your first point. Click and drag to create a curve, then add to more points to close the shape. Increase the mask feather value to create a shadow and give the animation more depth. But it looks like there's a slight issue at the start of the animation, just before the zoom in effect. Move the playhead to where the zoom in ends and set a keyframe for the mask path. Then go back to the start of the zoom in and adjust all four points of the mask to fix the issue. And this is what you will end up with.